Thank you. I'd like to welcome you to the uh, results presentation for Rural Life Sciences for the year ended 31 March 2022. I'm joined with my Caroline Stretton, our Group MD. I would like to give a quick introduction to the group, the people that involved in running the group now, our financials and the projects that the group's working on. RUA is uh, focused on developing uh, our own range of cardiovascular devices, particularly blood contacting devices. And those devices are enabled by our in-house technology called Elastion, which we believe to be the world's leading uh, long-term implantable polyurethane. Um, so as well as developing our own devices, we also enjoy uh, license revenues and royalty revenues from uh, licensing those materials to third parties, other medical device companies. A brief introduction to the executive team. And I'm Bill Brown, chairman of the company. I've been involved in a RUA or its predecessor company since uh, about 2011. Um, the other members of the executive management team are John McKenna, uh, who uh, looks after marketing. John's been involved in cardiothoracic marketing uh, in cardiovascular devices for uh, well over 30 years. We've got two uh, new members to the uh, the board and management team in Lachlan Smith and uh, Ian Anthony. Lachlan joined us uh, in December last year as our chief financial officer and joined the board, I think, on the last day of the, uh, of, of, of the, of the financial year. And Lachlan comes from a high-tech businesses, high-growth businesses. Uh, the other uh, new member of the team, Ian Anthony, uh, is in charge of clinical and regulatory uh, and comes in at a very important time as we are progressing the regulatory path of the business. And last but not least is Caroline Stretton, who took over as Group MD uh, on the retirement of David Richmond uh, from the board at, uh, at last year's AGM. Um, so if I can hand over to Caroline, uh, you will give a bit more detail on the group. Thank you, Bill. It was in 2020 that the, the IP licensing business of, of AirTech International merged with the owner-managed contract manufacturing business of RUA Medical Devices to create the RUA Life Sciences Group, as well as making key appointments in the executive team. As Bill mentioned earlier, we have also recruited into the wider management team, and that's enabled us to transform the business from that of the original contract manufacturer into a fully fledged medical device manufacturer. We have four businesses within the group, all exploiting the group's polymer technology. And I'll cover that in more detail in the next slide. It, but we operate out of three sites in Ayrshire near Glasgow. The third of these sites was purchased in November last year. And we now have 28,500 square footage of research, office and manufacturing space. And that includes four ISO class seven and eight clean rooms. So plenty of capacity available for future growth and all of our production facilities are ISO 13485, FDA and PDMA registered, allowing us to sell into many global territories. And since the creation of the group, we've actually doubled the workforce and our current employee base is now 43 and growing. Next slide, please. Of the four business units within the group, two are mature, revenue generating and highly profitable businesses. Rua by Materials is a licensing business which owns the Elastian IP. Annual revenues of £500,000 come from licence fees and royalty payments from sales of Elastion by Biomerics, our manufacturing partner. So it's only outgoing costs relate to patent renewal fees and is akin to an annuity business. Rua Medical Devices undertakes contract manufacturing for third parties, as well as being the centre of excellence for processing of Elastian-based medical device. And this is the engine room for development and manufacture of all of the group's products. Annual revenue, just over £1 million. So both uh, of these highly profitable business units are funding the overheads for the medical device developments within Rua Vascular and Rua Structural Heart, since a key growth driver for the group is the exploitation of Elastion as an enabling technology. 
Neurovascular is involved in the development and launch of a vascular graft pipeline, and this is targeting the $1 million surgical thoracic aortic market, and value will be maximised by growing this graft business to achieve attractive levels of profitability. And a 10% market share is predicted, with the route to market being through distribution agreements. Rua Structural Heart is positioning itself to disrupt the $8 billion surgical and TAVI heart valve market. The innovative polymeric heart valve technology platform could be a game changer since there's a real unmet need with existing treatments for aortic heart valve disorders. There is no solution that currently exists that addresses the durability of the heart valve without significant compromises having to be made by the patient, such as lifelong anticoagulant use. The proposed route to market for Rua Structural Heart is either via partnership, licensing or sale to a major player in the industry at a point where we have significantly de-risked the technology and increased the value of the business and made it an attractive proposition prior to clinical trial or launch. Back to you, Bill. If I can just uh, quickly uh, look at the uh, the results for the year to March 2022, um, all of the numbers are actually very good with 6% growth in revenue, which is all volume driven. There was no a uh, price increase behind that. Um, we managed to increase our gross margins uh, despite some inflationary pressures, and they've increased to 84% over the course of the year. Um, with the biomaterials business, uh, not just having great gross margins, it's got fantastic net margins as well, which are actually running at over 90%, um, which uh, demonstrates that annuity business type that, uh, that Caroline mentioned earlier. And within our contract manufacturing business, it, it achieved a net margin of 47%. A, during the course of the financial year that we're reporting on. So, in, you know, in excess of a £500,000 net margin a, from that contract manufacturing business. We continue to invest in a, the overall rural group, a, 900, over 900000 being put into the, the, the R&D projects and a further 900000 into the uh, the capital structure and infrastructure of the of the company. Um, cash was well managed at the year end. We closed with a, 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 a just short £3 million in, in, in cash. Um, the operating highlights, which uh, what's driving driving the business, we were undertaking the transformation from a, being a contract manufacturing business and a, and a, and a polymer licensing business into a fully fledged uh, medical device manufacturer. And you know that this is not a not an easy task. Um, a lot, say, you know, was having to change, but you know, kind of great progress has been made in that. As Caroline mentioned earlier, we've been building the strength and depth in the four key departments at present, which is quality, regulatory, R and D, and finance. And within those areas, two new executive directors appointed in Lachlan and Ian. Um, one of the keys to the success of the company is making sure that our people are fully aligned with the with the corporate objectives and some great systems uh, and procedures have been put in place to make sure that uh, not only are people aligned and they know what to do so that we can achieve our objectives, but if anything has gone off track, we can pick up on that and take corrective action earlier. So there's some, some, some really good systems and processes uh, being implemented. Um, along with that, we're developing the uh, manufacturing process for the grafts so that when they are launched on approval, um, that we're able to meet the anticipated demand that uh, that we will have for the uh, for, for, for the products, and the part of that regulatory process, uh, despite the, uh, the, the 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 disappointment we had with the five ten k process, we are currently in a very constructive dialogue with the with the FDA on that regulatory pathway, and we'll do we'll discuss more of that later in the presentation. So just looking at the, the profit and loss account, um, the biomaterials business, which turned over 487,000 and then about 20,000 the previous year, um, is down because of some timing differences with a with, 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 with one particular licensee. Uh, just the way that that contract was accounted for, we had more than 12 months the revenue recognised in the previous 12 months and just 12 months in the, in the, in the current year. So actually overall volumes were up, uh, but just held back by that royalty cap issue 
and uh, currency conversion. The contract manufacturing business saw you know really nice growth up 11 percent um, and the gross margins have increased from 82 to 84 percent without any price increase uh, issues within that. All of the R and D's been expensed the profit loss account nine hundred three thousand this year against five hundred forty one last year, and within the overall admin cost, there's say four hundred fifty four hundred sixty thousand of that is non cash items in amortisation, share based payments, etc. Um, so the the, the 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 as I've said earlier, the cash uh, cash costs are are are, are lesser. Um, On to the balance sheet. Um, we've invested a, a further 900,000 in, in fixed assets. One of the main issues within the balance sheet was, was from what we were doing on negotiating the contract with the, 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 the principal customer. Um, that customer had previously been on a, um, a, a, a working capital cycle where they were prepaying a, for product and in exchange for the prepayment, they were getting a, a very attractive discount on the, uh, the list price of the products. Um, that process, that's a kind of working capital prepayment issue, a, was made it very difficult to then look at the um, the prices charged to the customer. So it's been changed now that they've gone on to regular a credit terms. Um, so we've not no longer giving that discount, and it's also enabled us to put through a, a, a quite a substantial price increase over the course of the next twelve months, which comes through in a quarter by quarter basis. So without any further volume increase, we should see a, an increase in the in the the, the the revenues from from the contract manufacturing business. Um, but uh, you know the the volumes are looking to continue to be a, improving from. A pre the 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 COVID impact, and um, the balance sheet strong with the uh, with, with with good cash in the balance sheet. The only borrowings uh, relate to uh, effectively a mortgage or loan that was taken out on, on one of the properties, and from cash management, a uh, the big difference in the current liabilities was the payment uh, of the deferred consideration on the acquisition of Rua Medical. Um, so just moving on. Yes, as well as our technological advancements, we are making really good progress in our approach to ESG. We have aligned our business practices with the UN's 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. We believe these are key to achieving a much more sustainable future and also improving staff engagement. Included within our environmental targets is achievement of ISO 14001, the Environmental Management System Certification, which will improve our environmental performance. And we are taking advantage of energy efficiency assessment to access grants to improve our infrastructure and to support employee conversion to electric vehicles. All employees have access to a, an EV salary sacrifice scheme and EV chargers are also in place at all sites. Being in the, the manufacturing and engineering sector, we are very cognizant of diversity and inequality and we promote an inclusive workplace. Around a third of our staff are, are females and this ratio also extends to the operational leadership team. Our employee satisfaction service score remains high at 85% and this demonstrates that employee engagement remains consistent and positive and we remain a, a living wage employer. Uh, so even though the workforce has doubled in the last two years, all employees continue to have personal development and upskilling plans to ensure they reach their full capabilities. And now 10% of our employees are undertaking either modern or graduate apprenticeship schemes. And we were really pleased this year to resurrect our student intern programme uh, after it had been on hold for two years due to COVID. Next slide, please. So just briefly, uh, the 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 business is is based on the platform technology of Elastion. What what is Elastion? Elastion is a copolymer of uh, polyurethane and silicon. It has the mechanical properties of polyurethane and the 
um, the biostability of, of, of silicon. The, the key issue with it is that this is a clinically proven product. It's been in the market for 15 years. It's been in human use for 15 years. There's well over 8 million very long-term implants. So it's material that is proven in the body, uh, recognised by the FDA and, uh, and other the regulators as being suitable for long-term human implant. Um, so the suitability is down to it being biocompatible, which anything going into the body needs to be, but it is then the, the long-term biostability and the effect of the, 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 the material being effectively inert, so it doesn't calcify, it doesn't throw a thrombus. Our licensees are very uh, continue to grow their businesses on the back of a uh, you know the good performance from a uh, from 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 the elastone polymer, uh, and they're seen in pacing leads from a uh, from from Abbott and St Jude, uh, rescue stents for a uh, for biotronic and Allium's uh, prostate stent, and uh, in in the uh, some of the the, the world's leading um, ECMO catheters from a uh, from so by 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 Gettinger. Um, so the business is, is is growing. There's a good steady uh, kind of growth uh, prospect on that, and it is the material uh, that all of our new devices that we'll be bringing to the market is being being built upon. If we can move on to the next slide. We mentioned earlier a key growth driver for the group is the exploitation of elastione as an enabling technology, and we have vascular are working towards the launch of an elastion sealed vascular graft pipeline. The total market for open surgical grafts is $1 billion. We are targeting the thoracic aortic market, and that's a specialty area of heart surgeons rather than cardiologists. And the thoracic aorta is that part of the aorta above the ab abdomen, so the, the aortic arch and the ascending and descending aorta. It's a, a niche space. We believe our target of our 10% market share is actually very conservative. And uh, the, the market leaders, Turumo, at McKay, they're still using nearly 40-year-old technology, which all contain animal-derived tissue. So our initial launches from the graph pipeline are the large bore roots and straight grass. They have average selling prices ranging from £700 to over £2,000. And we're also planning to launch a more complex graph called a, a frozen elephant trunk, and that can sell for up to eighteen thousand pounds in the in the US market. Next slide, please. So why are the market leaders using nearly 40-year-old technology? Well, there just simply has been very little innovation at all in surgical graphs over the last 70 years in the early 1950s, the first PVC grafts were hand sewn together and implanted in dogs to replace damaged aortas. In the, the late 50s, the, the Bakey graft was a breakthrough. It was the first knitted dacron graft in humans, but it was unsealed, so it needed to be pre clotted with the patient's own blood to prevent leakage. Then came the Turumo, Vascutec and, and McKay grafts in 1987, and they are still the market leaders today for large, large bore. There have been some reported leakage issues with these products due to issues with consistency of manufacturing processes, surgeon and handling. They have a, a risk of continuity of supply of collagen and gelatin. It, only two countries in the world have the capability to supply this BAC free tissue, which makes it very expensive and highly regulated. And if hairs become infected with BAC, the supply will stop. And what's really gathering momentum over the last few years is if a patient doesn't want a graph containing animal derived material due to religious, ethical, moral, dietary reasons, then there is no alternative in the market. So there are some countries already who have made it mandatory that if a non animal derived alternative is available, then it must be stocked in hospitals and used for patients. And, and of course, in our post-COVID world, the risk of cross-species contamination will almost certainly drive regulators to reconsider the use of devices containing animal tissue at some point in the future. 
But the the mask the McCain vasque tech rafts they they command a very high um, gross margin. So the only real innovation has been with a, a hybrid surgical and endovascular frozen elephant trunk device. It was launched in two thousand and four. It's a stenty graft that does have limitations, including leakage and thrombosis. So with our graft pipeline offering the, the non-biogenic technology, free from animal derived tissue, and also addressing the limitations of the market leading graphs, we believe we do have the potential to be a leading player in the graph market. Next slide, please. Just touching on the progress that we have made with our vascular graph development, we have completed all the necessary testing required for FDA regulatory submission. We completed a six month animal trial and we had really favorable results when compared to Turumo's gel weave product. But of course, with all medical device submissions, there is an inherent risk that regulators disagree with our strategy or ask for more data. Historically, the FDA has always approved large bore grass via the 510K route without clinical data. But since our animal study showed a difference in external graft healing properties, the FDA had essentially two options available to them. They could determine that, that our device was not substantially equivalent, which would have put us down the PME route and as an order of magnitude more complex in terms of time and cost. But instead, they offered to continue with the less onerous 510k process on the proviso that we submitted clinical data to support safety of the graft. So, of course, we accepted that offer and we are going to be conducting a relatively small clinical trial and manage the delay to the US launch rather than incur what would have been an extended delay if we went down the PMA path. The clinical study that we're planning to, uh, planning to perform, that will enable us to look closely at graph performance versus predicate devices. There was a difference in healing seen in the animal trial, and that was the external fibrous encapsulation of the graft. There was also less inflammation noted and less leakage noticed. So our graft could really have huge advantages of quicker healing, less time in chest strain, meaning quicker discharge from hospital, so less cost being incurred, and also allowing re-operations. To be a, a leading player in the graph market, we need to get the distribution strategy right. So our route to market, we believe, will be much more efficient through a distribution route where we leverage existing and experienced sales teams. Two options are being progressed at the, at the moment. Uh, the first through regional distributors. They are normally owner managed. They are entrepreneurial who use local networks. And, and secondly, through distributors who have a more global reach. They already sell complementary products to heart surgeons. So they have an excellent sales network already in place. The latter probably being more advantageous in the medium to long term. Next slide, please. So in terms of timing, we plan to start the clinical trial this fiscal year with primary endpoint being early 2024. We are continuing on a very low risk regulatory pathway. So as a case of when rather than if we get 510k clearance to market in the future. And this is expected towards the end of 2024 with first sales in the US very soon after. The clinical trial was always required to support regulatory approval in Europe and also to support uptake of the graft in the US by the wider surgical community. And that would enable sales in the US to slowly gain traction. Since we will now have clinical data ahead of the US launch, we will see a much faster ramp up in sales in the US. 
and the time to maximum market penetration is relatively unchanged. And we will also use this clinical data to support global regulatory approvals of other graphs within the vascular pipeline from 2026 onwards. The frozen elephant chunk device will need its own separate clinical study and launches of this device are estimated in 2027. Next slide, please. Thanks, Carla. Um, the kind of question that I think can be asked in this is why, is why do patients need an alternative to the current technology that's in the market? And there's two real drivers of that. One is that the, 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 the current market technology results in a patient compromise. And the other is that there is a huge unmet need in the developing world where the current technology isn't really suitable and particularly the, the, the price points that are having to be sold at or the price, or the price points of, of manufacture, you know, makes it very difficult for the demand for devices within the developing world to be, to be met. So the, the compromises that, 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 that I mentioned are, are affect both the mechanical valves and the biological valves that are in the market. A mechanical valve will a, you know, last pretty much forever. A, they're, they're, they're exceptionally well engineered, um, you know, good pieces of uh, engineering technology. But those devices, they are noisy. Um, you know, study suggests that you know up to fifty percent of of a, of patients who have a who have a mechanical valve, you know, would prefer to have one that that that, that uh, didn't make any noise and would actually contemplate a reop on that. Um, you know, but you know, so, so they're noisy, and the patient also requires to be on long-term anticoagulation treatment. And it's because the the the, the, the valves have a tendency to be thrombogenic, uh, so to avoid the thrombogenic, the patient needs to be a blood thinner. Um, but you know, if there's too much blood thinner, the patient then runs the risk of a of a major bleed. So you know, quite a quite a compromise to be balanced here. The biological valves, uh, they. Um, you know they don't they don't require long term anticoagulation treatment. They're, they they don't have a clicking noise, um, but they are expected to degenerate and eventually fail. And there's actually a, a clinical term for it, which is called structural valve deterioration, which all of the biological valves start to start to suffer from. So you know valves that have been designed using that uh, biological material, which is uh, bovine pericardium, they're now actually being designed for failure. Where the frames can be expanded, where you know other valves can be can be put in put in their places. So there's big big compromises there. And um, there's currently no polymeric valve on the market. A company Foldax has a, is doing early stage clinical trials. And at the point of Foldax going into that, their their business was valued by you know the investors at 150 million US dollars. So so what is Rua's solution to the compromises? That patients uh, need to face. Um, one is the, the the benefits of an elastial material. Um, it is in the most biostable of uh, long term implantable uh, polyurethanes uh, and doesn't uh, do, you know do, doesn't doesn't have the the the, the, the problems of other materials. Um, and in, in addition to that, we've got what we think is an exceptionally good design that has limited the level of stresses that are on the are on the, the, the heart valve leaflets. Um, we've fully eliminated the use of animal byproducts um, by having you know a valve that's more more like the natural valve. You know, the patient shouldn't require long term anticoagulation treatments, which are required for mechanical valves. And because elastion is completely non-calcific, it shouldn't have the problems that are associated with the biological valves where calcification or recalcification is the, is, is, is the, is the route to failure. Um, elastion itself is, is, is readily processable, um, which can lead to you know, significant reductions in the manufacturing costs of heart valves, which opens up the potential of treating uh, the patients in, in, in the developing world, in India in particular, um, where the constraint uh, is, is the fact that the current, uh, the, 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 the current prices that they're able to afford are, are, are not dissimilar to the actual underlying manufacturing costs of the, uh, of, of the valves that are in the market just now. So moving on to the next slides, uh, where are we in the, in the process? We had a, an, an interesting uh, issue came up when we were looking at the material that had been created for the graft project. 
and within within that we, we realized that we'd created a composite material um that might just be you know a, a step change and improvement in the potential for polymeric valves one of the th risks that any heart valve has got to got to look at is the potential for catastrophic failure um there are devices that are made out of a you know polymers in medical use that can every now and again has got a catastrophic failure and you know we need to make sure that any valve that we take to the market you know has got that risk absolutely minimized and eliminated uh, as, as, as best as possible and um, so that's why we spend a lot of time on the manufacturing trials a uh, looking to improve the the the, the, the quality uh, and the durability and the repeatability of manufacture which is which has gone well but we're currently working in sort of two parallel programs just now, which is the 100% polymeric leaflet and a valve using the same underlying design, uh, but using a much, much stronger uh, composite material that's been created through a combination of a textiles technology and the application of elastion uh, to, to the devices. Um, the the proof, of, proof of concept has shown that the design works um, it's got very low gradients, uh, it works hydrodynamically exceptionally well. Um, where we're looking at taking the projects is to uh, get, you know, during the course of this calendar year, is to decide which one has got a, you know, the greatest chance of a uh, creating a valve that's going to be, a, you know, far best for the, for, for, for the patient and, uh, you know, can be commercially uh, exploited on that, on that basis. Um, so bringing them up to the broadly the same the same phase, compare one to the other, and then push forward on the the, the, the various trials that are required. Um, so we'd be hoping that in the a uh, you know calendar year twenty twenty three that we'll be taking a you know the first of our valves into into animal testing. Um, that we recognise that this is a an industry that's dominated by. A, you know, big players, a heart valve clinical trials are hugely expensive. Um, so looking to all the work that we do on regulatory, it'll be off the standard that's required by these big and bigger corporations, a, you know, to ensure that we've got the best chance of, of any future partnership or, 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 or license transactions with them. So moving on just to the, the summary of the group, Caroline touched on, on, on this earlier, where the, where the group businesses are. Um, so rural biomaterials, you know, it was described as a, as a as an annuity business. Um, you know, there's there's close to there's around about half a million pounds of annual income from that. Um, you know, any annuity business on that you know kind of basis has got to be you know, in my view, worth a sort of minimum of five million, which is not far off our market cap when you adjust it for the year end cash. Um, rural medical devices, the contract manufacturing business, growing strongly, will continue to grow. Uh, has been the recipient of, uh, of, of 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 some some really good investment in that in that area. Again, broadly fifty percent gross margin business. Um, you know, in the in the in the, the year just passed, you know, generated about half a million of net net you know net contribution to the group. Uh, contract manufacturing businesses have been changing hands on 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 ten times to twenty times a EBITDA. So you know that would value our business on that matrix at somewhere between you know five and five and ten million. Ruvascular will be a, a, a game changer in the large bore vascular graft area, uh, particularly those devices focused on the heart on the on the heart surgeon. That itself is a one billion dollar market. Um, as Caroline said, it's a question of, of of when, not if, that we get these grafts to the market. Um, and we certainly believe that with the, the, the benefits that we think are going to come through from the clinical trial, that you know, achieving a minimum of ten percent market share on that should 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 certainly be the minimum target that we're that we're, we're, we're setting for ourselves and our future partners in that. And then through a structural heart developing a polymeric heart valve, um, you know, we've already seen what these programs, a polymeric valve program, at the point of going into human trials have been valued at. Um, you know, we're looking to take. What we believe will be, you know, an improvement on even that, a into into in, 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 into trials along with the uh, with partners in the future. So that's the the the, the summary of uh, the group's activities, uh, and I hope that uh, it's been able to give a, a a better view of what's what's been what's been achieved over the course of the last twelve months, and we would expect the business to be going over the over the over the over the next year. So, thank you very much.
you to you both. Um, back in February, Caroline said that one of the key players in Heart Bowels was visiting them that day. How did the visit go and have relationships been maintained since? How did the, 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 I think the visit went exceptionally well. Um, we had, with people in looking at really sort of two or three different project opportunities, but, you know, kind of all, all really around textiles and, and, and the, what we're doing in graphs and, 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 and our polymeric expertise. Um, and I think the, I think everybody from that company went away, um, went away pretty impressed and on a, a sort of OEM opportunity um, that's progressing exceptionally well, and, and, and the, the, the two sort of project management teams are, are, are working, are, you know, kind of working together on that. See you know, what we can progress. The more exciting, but from my perspective, is that say, you know, that that discussions at a sort of operational level have also moved a moved into more of the corporate level, um, and you know, we're having. You know, exploring to see whether there's any touch points within the two businesses that we can work together in the future. So, yeah, we're, we're, you know, we haven't we haven't achieved anything yet, but yes, we are still talking, and uh, you know, I think that you know, I think there was a, 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 a huge amount of the uh, respect for what Rua uh, has achieved from you know, some of the uh, a pretty big player in the industry. Thank you. Um... What is the company's strategy to ensure it has sufficient funds to progress the 510k clinical study, bearing in mind current low market cap? Um, I don't think that's necessarily something appropriate to answer at this point. Um, but we, we do recognise that you know, the clinical study has got to be paid for. Um, we do, you know, we've said in the in the annual report accounts and the sort of in the, the, the working capital statement type things that you know uh, funding you know, issue will will arise, but I'm not going to speculate you know kind of when or how much or you know kind of when when that would kick off. Um, I think the I think the key thing would be to is to get the uh, the agreement with the FDA out of the way first, yeah, so that we know. You know exactly what it is that's required. There's no point in speculating on. You know we've got a view of what it will be, but you know the FDA is you know kind of got to got to agree with that view, or you know to say well you're actually being you know, too pessimistic. You know, we need to do you know X number of patients rather than the Y you've suggested. So you know I, th I, th I think we need to wait for the got visibility on that. Okay. Uh, your last two announcements mentioned two prototype aortic heart valves. Um, why two? It is the, it's the two different materials. Um, so it's been driven by, you know, we think we've got a, an exceptionally good design that has reduced the levels of stresses uh, on, 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 on the heart valve leaflets. Um, we were really excited by the 100% the, the polymer and the advances that we made in the manufacture of that. But we've just taken a not a step back, but we've, we've said some of the stuff that's come out of the of the graft area has been so exciting as a potential material that we really need to get this working and trying. Um, you know, the early prototypes are you know looking really really exciting. Um, you know, the very low pressure gradients required to open them, the durability work that say you know we'll be, 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 be working on. I think I think should be you know be really quite exciting as well. So it's it's a it's something that really came out of left field from the out of the out of the graft project, uh, and it's you know we've created this composite material that you know, I hope and think is, is going to be pretty unbustable, but still maintain the, the blood contacting properties of the last thing. Thanks. Um, what is your sense from the business development interactions on your products and the orders from existing and new customers in Rua's contract manufacturing business um, on the direction of the recovery from the pandemic by the medical device sector? We 
have been uh, in constant communication with our, our, our key business partner and they are seeing very significant growth in the states. In the European market, they're still not at the levels uh, they uh, enjoyed prior to COVID. So there's some big uh, future growth there. And as, uh, as Bill touched on, we have uh, not only uh, removed the, uh, the, the discount uh, process that we enjoyed a couple of years ago to give us a percentage uh, pricing growth. Uh, we've also agreed a, a, a new pricing structure as well, which will also give us growth. So I think certainly the, the next 12 months will look particularly strong for, for Rural Medical. And um, our hope is that it, it beats the 11% growth of, of the last fiscal year. Okay. Uh, what I also um, neglected to say, we are very hopeful in the next um, couple of months to, uh, to be signing uh, another contract with a, a key player in the med tech industry as well. So that should also uh, contribute to, to an excellent growth predicted. Perhaps then, um, last question, unless anyone has another one they'd like to submit, um, finishing on a perhaps a more positive take. Given the delay with the 510k, um, how and the issues that have been raised as a result of that, do you think it may result in a more competitive product? More competitive? More I think I, I think that I think what we will have at the point of launch will be data that will be hugely important from a marketing's perspective. Um, because we would have been launching on the back of the animal file data and you know we could go into um, you know we could go into you know key opinion leaders writing papers and whatever on it. You know, now we will have clinical data that the market will be able to use. And as Caroline kind of highlighted, the areas that we think we're going to see, you know, a massive difference in is our graph being substantially less a uh, inflammatory than the, the current product. Um, I mean, the, the, the current products do have an inflammatory response, which is the body's way of getting rid of the animal tissue. Um, so, you know, that makes the patient even quicker. Um, the graph should also leak less than the current technology, um, so it will, you know, hopefully mean that a patient will be on a chest drain for a shorter period of time. And you know, there tends to be a gap between the patient coming off chest drain and getting discharged from hospital. The quicker you can get them off the chest drain, the quicker they can uh, be discharged, which reduces the number of cost of the symptom. Um, so. Might not in itself the, the 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 product itself really change much. I mean, we've maybe kind of tweak at the edges a little bit, and some of the manufacturing improvements that we can bring in just with, with, with the time in there. Um, but having hard and fast data that can be used from a marketing perspective will certainly make it much more competitive. Um, which is why I think we went back to the slide that Caroline had of you know our our, our, our market share target you know target ten percent. You know that ten percent should be should be got as a as a, almost an also ran in the industry with the advantages we've got. I think we can be a much bigger player in that level. So, I don't know, don't know if that helps, but that's it does. Thank you. Um, how is the company reassuring institutional investors as Amati has been selling down, causing a share price collapse? Uh, we did, we've been kind of working with the, our non advising broker, Sencos, to you know, make sure that they kept, everybody's kept up to speed with a, 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 a round of institutional uh, presentations of course last, last, during last week, that's continuing to this week. Um, you know, I'm not going to speak for Amati and their current position as to where they are, um, you know, but if, if, we, if we haven't already had a conversation with them, we will be having a short list. So, you know, there's a, there's a program in, in, in the central. Okay, thank you. You mentioned new potential contract in your results statement. Can you expand? 
the the contract I, I that was to do with the the, the contract uh, manufacturing business uh, yes it's another uh, medical textile manufacturing contract uh, with a, a new uh, a new partner and it's a a, a partner who is uh, well renowned in the industry obviously we, we, we can't uh, disclose their their name. But uh, it's, we believe we are the first subcontractor to normally do the manufacturing in house. So it's certainly a, a fair in their part that they, they trust Rue Medical to take on uh, a small part of their manufacturing business. And we hope it is a, a, a foothold, it's a, a, a foot in the door, and it will lead to uh, future contracts as well with this, this partner. So early days yet, we're at the um, so at the, the, the legal stage, and as I say, I am hopeful in the next couple of months that we will uh, press the button and um, initiate that that contract, and it will lead to you know, many more in the in the foreseeable future. Um, I'm, I'm conscious you probably feel you had your say on on fundraising, but there is, um, as you can well imagine. Um, some interest around obviously the importance of cash and how it affects the um, longer term uh, validity of the business. Is, is there any comfort you can uh, offer around sort of timing and, and horizons there? Can I say um, yeah. something about, I think all options certainly have been considered, but we've, we're, there's a number of balls in the air, let's, <laughs> let's call it that. So number one, as Bill said, it's absolutely critical that we complete the piece of process with the, the FDA in, in, in August, just so we can de-risk the entire regulatory process and also ourselves having clarity on exactly what is required for uh, the clinical trial in terms of cost and timings. We need to manage the cash flow and the runway to support this trial. Um, Another uh, aspect is uh, we want to have validation on our route to market, in particular for the, for the graphs. We have got a, a number of distributors identified um, and depending which route we, we choose from a regional or a global distribution point of view, we would hope that we have uh, at least one of them signed up prior to um, you know, any, any potential fundraising in the future. And uh, uh, also, we would uh, really like the share price to be a lot higher as well, so that we will ensure that investors follow their money uh, and to minimise any dilution. So once we are, have clarity around these, these three aspects, I think we'll be in a much better position to, to advise. Well, thank you both for, for um, having a go at that one. Um, so, well, that is all from us today. Uh, thank you all for joining us, particularly in the heat. And um, we look forward to catching up with you all in six months' time. Thank you very much. Thanks for organising, Hannah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.